This is your 10 second countdown. Good morning, Trinity. It sounds like everybody is awake and raring to go this morning. I hope you're ready for worship and we'll enter in with the same kind of enthusiasm as we worship together this morning. If you are a guest with us this morning, you will find these Connect cards in the pew. We would love to have you fill out the Connect card and put them in the offering so that we can learn a little more about you and we could reach out to you and tell you a little more about us. You'll notice in your bulletin, there are, it's filled with announcements. And I just want to bring a couple things to your attention that may not be in the bulletin. First of all, we celebrate this morning. This past Tuesday evening, we were host at Trinity here in the sanctuary and in the youth building to the sending forth dinner for uh, the Columbia area pastors, a time for them to be together, to worship together, to get ready to go for this next upcoming year. And we are so glad that because of your support, your encouragement, and your participation in this church, it allows us to open the doors and host events such as this. The other thing that we hosted this past week, we opened our youth building to Westwood students who are taking AP tests. Oh, boy, that, that's, that's something to do. And being maybe off campus in a different site and all, the warmth, the encouragement, the building in this place, we opened our doors again so that these students could have a good, safe, nice place to take these exams. And we know, again, that because of your encouragement, your prayers for this church, that is allowed, and we are grateful for that. I think we should celebrate and give a round of applause for what this church has done this past week. We are reaching out in our community. Notice Ms. Bonnie sitting over here. Wave your hand, Ms. Bonnie, because I know that she still needs some VBS workers, and we need people to sign up for VBS, even if you could only be there one evening. There are details in the bulletin about dates and so forth. Please consider prayerfully your participation with VBS. Today is the Epworth Mother's Day offering. There's a little pink envelope. You'll see my pink that I'm holding up, a little pink envelope in the bulletin. Epworth has been in existence 128 years, serving children in need, children who need the love and care in a Christian environment. And we are part of Epworth. They rely heavily on, on donations from the area churches. So consider, if you will, giving to that as well. There are many prayer requests in the bulletin. I ask that you look at that list of prayers. There are others in your hearts and on your minds, and we will lift those together today as well. Pastor Scott has something very special because you wonder why these pillows are not for you to take a nap during the sermon. They're for a very good cause. So Betty talked about Epworth Children's Home being a ministry that has been around and been helping children for so many years. The offering that you give today, there's one in September, is really ways that they can fund to do the work that they do. This church is also connected in other ways. There's a Sunday School Connection class that has adopted a cottage, uh, a girl's cottage at Epworth Children's Home. And so that is great. Our quilters have made these pillowcases. These are going to be for the children at, at Epworth. And there's some pillows some of you have bought. If you'd like to do buy some more pillows to help fill these pillowcases, you can do that. You can go to our website. You can call up the front desk this week and see how you can do that. I think it may even be in the bulletin how you can do that. But these pillowcases are coming from us, from Trinity, right, with love. And so this is the way that we can give back. Um, we're also in conversation about partnering with Epworth to see how they might be able to, to come out into the Blythewood area. There's more on that, I think, to come. So I'm, I'm in conversation with them. Uh, actually, with, with Don Hilliard with the Counseling Center. Maybe we're going to see if we can work some counseling to come out this way from Epworth to work with families and children in this community because there's such a great need all over. Uh, and in our growing community, we certainly need that. So we're gonna, I'm going to pray over these pillowcases. 
And so why don't you pray with me? Let's pray. Oh, God, we thank you for this day and this opportunity that we gather together, the, the pillowcases that rest, the pillows that are here, the students that will receive them, the hands that have made them, bless them and keep them in your presence. Allow them to be a place of rest and comfort as their eyes close, knowing, oh God, you are with them, and as their eyes open to a new life and transformation in the way of Christ through Epworth Children's Home and all those who work with these children, give them courage and strength to let them know that you love them now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And one last announcement. Today is a day that we celebrate women. Whether you are a mother, a sister, an aunt, a um, a grandmother, a great-grandmother, we celebrate you. We celebrate all of our women today. And you'll notice there are beautiful flowers that are on the altar. You are invited after the service to come and take one and as a remembrance of this day and remembrance of God's love through women. Some women don't have children, but they're still maternal. They take care of others. So please... Avail yourself of this beautiful gift from our church for all the women in this sanctuary. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we start our service. Heavenly Father, we lift up this congregation. We lift up this day. We thank you for bringing us here to worship you and to fellowship with one another. Thank you for the gift of love through mothers. Thank you for the gift of love that we can give others through Epworth Children's Home and through all of the ministries of this church. We now quiet our hearts and we open our hearts to hear what you would say to us today. Let us worship you. Amen. Thank you. 
Please remain standing as we continue our worship with the responsive greeting printed in the bulletin or on the screen. Your part is in bold. A love that never ceases. A hope that cannot be quenched. These are the things that are of God. Please be seated. Join me in the prayer of illumination in your bulletin and on the screen. Let us pray together. God of mercy, you promised never to break your covenant with us. In the midst of the multitude of words in our daily lives, speak your eternal words to us that we may respond to your gracious promises with faithfulness, service, and love. Amen. Our Old Testament reading, Psalm 47, also printed in your bulletin and on the screen. We will read this responsibly as well. Your part is in bold. Clap your hands, all peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is to be feared. Right? Who subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. God has gone up with a shout. The Lord the Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our ruler. For God is the ruler of all the earth. God reigns over all the nations. The princes, the princes of the people gather as the people of the God of Abraham. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and living of these words.
Would all, am I on? Great. I welcome the children to come join me for a children's moment. Hello. Good morning. How is everybody? All right. So let's talk a little bit, and I'm going to read the verse, and then we'll talk and do a little show and tell. Does that sound okay? All right. Our verse is Philippians 4, 5. Let your gentleness be evident to all. What does it mean to be gentle? Any takers? Go ahead. To be nice. Yes. To not be hard. To not be hard. Perfect. What else? Okay, well, because we're approaching the summertime, and some of you may go to the beach. Who has been to the beach before? Okay, been to the beach? All right. I'm going to show you a couple things. Wait one second. These are two things that are special to me because I found them at the beach. Who knows what this is? Yeah. Shark's tooth. Is it hard or soft? It's hard. Do you want to touch it? Go ahead and pass it around and feel how hard it is. All right? But you got to give it back to me because <laughs> I found that, and I was really proud of that. <laughs> Great. It's a big tooth, isn't it? Yes, and it's very hard. Thank you, dear. Now I'm going to show you something else from the beach and see what you think about this. I think this is a Biaf. Actually, that's a great idea. I'm going to do that exactly. Because that's a great idea. See, I've got it all covered up. Does anybody know what this is? What is that? It's a sand dollar. It's a sand dollar. And if you break it, nobody's going to cry. <laughs> so what we learn from things that... What we learn from things that are very fragile is that we have to be careful. We have to be soft. We have to um, be aware of how we're handling things. And we can do that with people, too. So sometimes people... Um, can be very fragile, and we need to be careful and gentle with people. Um, gentleness means that we use soft touches and soft voices. Have you ever heard a really loud voice, and how did it make you feel? A loud voice can sometimes be a little scary sometimes or make you a little sad. So people's feelings are, can be fragile and sensitive, and they can also be broken. Like we could break this sand dollar, and we can also break people's feelings. Um, and God wants us to treat one another with care and gentleness because he loves all of us. He loves us and he loves other people. Who has ever had their feelings hurt? I have. I get my feelings hurt. All right. So God is gentle with us, and that's why we should be gentle with one another. Gentleness is being thoughtful and considerate of other people's feelings. So just remember that we want to be gentle and kind to everybody because we don't know how they're feeling at that moment. So let's say a little prayer together. You ready? Dear God, help me to be patient kind and gentle to the people around me. Amen. All right. You're welcome to go back to your seats or go to Children's Church.
Well, good morning. good morning. All the places you could be, Trinity United Methodist Church is where you are this morning. It is good to, to see you here. We talked a lot in the announcements. Betty talked about a lot of the things that are happening on campus. And, and it just makes me think that it's nice to talk about how we can use our campus, the way the number of groups that are use it, the way you use it. But that's not why we're here. That's, that's not something for us to measure. What we're looking at is actually not the transformation of the buildings, but the transformation of each heart, right? That's, that's the real message that we're saying. And an outpouring of that is the usage of your facilities, right? So that's what I want us to keep in mind because we're in this sermon series on Be Like Jesus we want to be more like him so that we are transformed. Our hearts are transformed in such then that we are welcoming and open and then folks can come, right? So that's kind of what I want us to, to think about because um, I get excited too because there's something going on in this, this campus seven days a week. There's always something going on and, and that's a great thing. But we want transformed hearts. We want transformed lives. That's what God wants. He wants our heart. And that's what I hope that you're going to learn and have learned in this five-week series. Because these are practical things. It's not about how much book knowledge or how many verses you can quote or all the theology that you know. It's nothing to do with that. It's a transformed heart. And uh, we want to be more like Jesus. So I'm going to run right back over the last four weeks because today's our last week of this series. So the last four weeks, week one, we looked at how does God want me to love others? The whole idea that we're committed to loving God and loving others. Week two, what will give me true joy? Where do you find your, your true joy? Despite all our circumstances, I feel inner contentment and understand my purpose in life. What is the thing that no matter how it, your life is going, that when you do it or are part of it, you find joy, right? So that's, that's what you need to look for. Week three, how do I find real peace? Where do I find peace? I'm free from anxiety because I have found peace with God, peace with others, and peace within myself. Remember, we didn't say that your anxiety goes away, but it just doesn't grip you like it is if you understand that you have found peace in God and you work through that. Last week, how can I maintain hope during hardships, during the hard times? You know, how can I maintain that, that there is hope even when it's hard, right? even when it's hard? This week, how can I be considerate of others? How can we take care and be gentle and kind to others? Philippians 4, 5, Paul knew what he was talking about when he said, Let gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Reminds me of the story of the friends who raised the roof on the house that Jesus was in so they could lower his friend down into the, the house, right? Because they knew that Jesus, the king, was in the house and there was power that was going to be in there and that their friend was going to come down and that Jesus was going to do something. So I want us to think now as we're at week five that the roof of our life has been lifted when you come in here. It's been lifted up, right? And that, 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 that all this information is coming in, that Christ is present with us. He's in the room. He's with us. And he's going to teach us how to respect those around us, how to be patient with difficult people and circumstances, to relate to others with kindness and softness, and to lead a balanced life. Those are the four areas we're going we're gonna to look at. So most of us, have been on the receiving end of unkind comments because of the way we dress, the way we look, if we are talented or not, according to somebody else, if we are attractive or not, according to somebody else, if we are intelligent or not, according to somebody else, if we are ridiculed, right, for your weight, your appearance, your awkwardness. I have felt that pain and you have felt that pain, right? I mean, it doesn't take you long to feel that pain, does it? You can, you can go right to it. Right? You can go right to it. So if you know what it's like, you understand how devastating that is. Hurt people hurt people. So when we go at each other, most of the times it's because we have been hurt and we, 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 that's what we know. But God tells us, no, we need to be gentle. We can still 
make our point, but there's a way to do that, and that's what we're going to learn about. We need to be in tune to the realities of the world because God's Word teaches us how to live. That's what this whole series is about, how to be, how to be like Jesus, how to live like him. Right? We marvel at God's word. For Paul in verse 5 just drops this discussion in. He's talking about joy, and then he drops in these words about let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. He realized one of the greatest hindrances to joy is all the bullies in the world and the scars that every one of us can share, right? We all have them. You know, we live in an abusive and insensitive culture. Paul gives us practical counsel, and he tells us to be gentle with it. He tells us to go into it gentle, just like Jesus did. Jesus was very gentle as he went in, right? Our Christianity is not about theology exams or Bible knowledge, though that can have its place. It's about, it's about living like Christ lived, gentle, kind. It's about a change. It's about a transformation that comes about when God's Spirit gets in our roof, in our house, and lives there. And then we become, slowly, over time. It's a practical change. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes your whole life. You know, sometimes you're up, sometimes you're not up. But there is a change. You'll be different when you leave here than when you walked in the door because God will have gotten a hold of you. Something will resonate with you, and if it doesn't resonate with you, that you understand it now, somewhere else down the road, it will, because it's a practical change. It should affect every area of your life. Something that we, we take for granted, but that's the whole transformation piece that, that we're looking for, that God wants in us. Now, verse 5 here in Philippians 4, the translation of the word gentleness has several different words. It can mean considerate. It can mean moderation. It can mean forbearance. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But the idea of gentleness, I think, is a, and kindness is a great way for us, I think, to, to understand. So let's look at the, the four areas. We should respect those around us, right? That, that makes sense. We respect those that are around us. We show a lack of respect when we treat people like objects, Right? When you yell at somebody, you're treating them as an object, not as a human being. Because you certainly wouldn't want someone yelling at you, right? Right? And we have to remember that. We don't, we don't always, we, we don't remember that. We forget. Right? Oh, no, it's not an object. It's a human being. Maybe I can talk to them, right? So when we, when we, we treat people like objects, we, we don't show respect. We do not, we don't, we don't only show a lack of respect towards others, we don't respect God when we do that. We don't respect our family. Think about that person in your life. Maybe they're in the room with you. Think about that person. Man, if you didn't show respect, that backhand's coming your way, right? You know what I'm talking about? I mean, you're going to straighten up. You're not going to, you're not going to embarrass the family. You're not going to embarrass me, right? So why do we act the fool, right? Why do we do this? Right? And, and so God is, and so Paul is writing in Philippians to the church at Philippi and teaching us that this is what Christ has shared to be gentle in these moments. How do we show consideration? Picking up after yourself so someone else doesn't have to. Letting another go in front of you in line, whether it's in the grocery line, maybe you let someone in front of you as you're driving. You know, they're trying to turn and you just let them go, right? You show some respect. Maybe you hold the door for somebody instead of letting it slam in, in their face. You refuse to ridicule somebody else. Even though there's this joke that goes around and everybody's laughing, you know that it's not respectful and that you shouldn't be laughing. You're friendly to someone who is tired or alone. You respect the time of another by being on time for appointments, only taking up one parking spot. <laughs> right? You know what I'm talking about? Listening when another person is talking, right? I mean, so these are ways that we can show and be considerate. I know we got a lot to say, but we need to listen, and out of that, I think we can communicate better. Um, if we can learn to be considerate in the little things, then we can certainly be considerate in the big things. Because Christ says if we have responsibility for the little things and can do that well, 
we can then have responsibility for the big things, right? We don't get to where we are in our lives as a child to an adult by just going from here to now I'm the CEO of all these people, whatever that means to you in your life. It takes time. There's steps. There's ranks. There's positions. There's work. There's things to do. And if you know that if you're at the top, that you can still sweep the floors with the best of them, the better off you're going to be because then you can show respect, right? You know what I'm saying? So if you you got you to be able to sweep the floor here, and if you can sweep the floor up here, you can know that there's respect up and down the line. And when we show respect in the little things, the responsibility for the big will happen for us. Why should we be considerate? Well, that's the way of Jesus. We know the pain of being on the other side of being ridiculed, right? And that hurts. It's the human thing to do. It's the way you would want others to treat you. And it's just right. And it is just right. The true Christian love is just not the, uh, about lyrics in a song. Even though peace like a river, I thought I was starting to sing more verses in my head about that, right? We can sing, and that's great. We can sing about peace all day long. But if we're not living it, it's just words. By the way, y'all did a great job. That was wonderful. I could hear all the voices together. I could just hear it, right? You could just feel it. You could feel the peace, and a river does what? Just in general, this, this a very, it's, it's a calm Gentle, you know, but it's not, if it's just straight and it's going, no rocks, no hills, no nothing, can be gentle, right? You know, when you look at a river, it's never the same when you look at it. You look at it, it's never the same, it's always moving. It's always different each time you look at it. Even if you keep your eyes on it, it's different all the time, right? And so our lives need to be transformed and live to be gentle. So when people see us, they see gentleness, and kindness. James writes, whoever considers himself to be religious but does not keep a tight rein on his tongue deceives himself and his religion is empty. That's James 1 26. Right? So what we say and what we do, you know if you're a school teacher, clergy, uh, if you're responsible, if you're in the military, if whatever you're responsible for a, a, a group of people, a parent, that there's a, there's a certain way that we need to live and respect those that are around us. Otherwise, they're not going to take us seriously. So we, we, have to, we have to find this place that we can respect others. And I guess the real main issue is you got to respect yourself first. Because if you don't respect yourself, you won't respect others. Number two, we should be patient with difficult people and circumstances. Right? We spend much time with people. We understand that we're not a patient people, Right? Some, of the, some have suggested that there's a new measure of time we call the honko second. Honko second. Now, I watched this happen yesterday. Jan and I were going somewhere. We watched this happen. She didn't know I had written this in the sermon, and I'm telling you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You pull up to a light. The light's red. It turns green. Ah! I know I woke you up. I'm sorry about that. I know you jumped. Right? But that's what happens in the car, doesn't it? You're like, my goodness, it turned green. I can't even move. Now, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand if you've done that, but you've had that happen to you probably. Right? I mean, it's one of those things that people are, I mean, we watched it. That's, there was a car and another truck behind it. Boom. And I'm like, it just turned. It proved the point that we aren't patient. So let me test your patience. And I'm asking me the questions too. Do you ever feel annoyed that the person in front of you is only driving the speed limit? <laughs> you do. Okay, great. Me too. You get angry if someone isn't ready to listen the instant you are ready to talk. You get frustrated if some project doesn't go well right away. You, you find yourself yelling at traffic lights. <laughs> you, you pace around and around and around while you're waiting for your coffee to brew. Are you irritated when you have to wait in a waiting room? Uh, 11 o'clock, I'm here. Why don't they see me? Right? We want it now. But we need to be reminded that our circumstances, I think, reveal a greater purpose. 
Every frustrating occurrence is an opportunity for growth. It is for us to grow because our time belongs to God. And we should use it in a godly way. When things aren't going well, maybe we should just take a little time to pray, step back, and pause. When we're frustrated and need to stop and take that step back, maybe we just need to be reminded that the timetable that is set before us that we want to happen in a certain way is God's, and his time is his time. And it will happen or not, but it will be a period of time. We just have to wait. People who are, 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 are more patient are more pleasant to be around because you just, we not, aren't in a hurry. There are some things that we need to move, but there are times when, in general, we just need to go because I, have, I try to learn that you actually have more time when you go about it in a methodical way than if you just rush through something because then you're more prone to make mistakes and things happen and things and people get hurt. Number three, we relate to others with kindness and softness. This text points us to the need to be kind and soft in our dealing with others. Uh, It's true for a number of reasons. First, we must always remember that we represent Jesus. Now, my guess is you never think about that. And I rarely think about that. I know when I stand here, I'm doing that. But I rarely think about those things. But that's that's what we are. We are representing Jesus. right? Uh, and, and we need to remember that. My, Matthew takes Isaiah's words, uh, and, and Jesus speaks these in Matthew 12. He says, He will not quarrel or cry out. No one will hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out, till he leads justice to victory. In his name the nations will, be, will put their hope in him. The New Living Translation actually says he will not crush those who are weak or quench the smallest hope because Jesus is sensitive to the hurting and tender of e- tenderness of each person. He understands. He understands these things. You know, we need to understand that being, being kind opens up people to the harshness that shuts them down. Right? A lot of times we have great ideas. We have great things that we want to, to share. But if we get put down every time and people are harsh to us, we don't, you're not going to open up, are you? But if people turn that around and are kind to you and say, tell me about it, and you start sharing, then you can have conversations. It's easier to, to be kind than to be hard. Kindness wins friends. Harshness erects walls. Even in the most heated environments, a smile and a soft word can change. You know, you, you can see that out in the world. Right? If you go somewhere um, and, you know, you may just have that, that cashier that won't speak a word to you. You know what I'm talking about? They don't hardly look at you. But if you just smile or just look at them or say, have a nice day, you never know what that will do. Same thing with waiters and waitresses. They have to deal with, with us all the time, Right? This order's not right, and this has this, and all of this, and all they're doing is just making a little bit of money just to try to make ends meet, and if we can be kind to them and get their name and say their name once to them, at least call them by name once, watch what happens. Everybody loves for you to call them by name. You want your name said, right? So that, those are things that we can do to be kind. Our, cult, our, our goal is to be soft rather than harsh. The soft person is secure in their relationship with Christ and doesn't have to view every uh, encounter as a contest. You know, I'm going to be hard. Like I know people who they they want people to cry, right? And it's like, wait a minute. It's not about that because that means you're not secure with yourself. If you want to be a bully, then you're not secure with yourself. But if we're going to be secure with ourselves, then we don't need to do those things. And we can talk to each other as real people. And we can talk, we can listen, we can learn and affect change. Romans 2 verse 1 says, You therefore have no excuse, you who pass judgment on another, for at whatever point you judge the other, you are condemning yourself. For you who pass judgment do the same things. We judge a person by their weaknesses. We are inviting God to judge us by our weaknesses. You know the saying, if you point at someone, there's three fingers pointing back at you. Right. So we have, to, we have to remember that. And there are ways to, 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 to affect change. As a parent, 
you know, if you yell at your kid, are they really going to do what you say? And you might say, well, yeah, I keep, I, I put them in ship shape. Right. You yell at them and you yell at them and you yell at them. And eventually they're going to do it because they're tired of it. But don't be surprised what happens. Right? Don't be surprised when something else. But if you go in softer, and I, you know, I mean, there, there's, when I say soft, you, you, it, the, the, the situation, you know, hey, look, you know, I asked you to clean this room up. Hey, look, let's go get some lunch. I'll take you out to lunch, but you need to clean this room up. And we'll do that, and then we'll go. All right. you, can, you can be a little softer about things. Yeah, your kids didn't want to do that, did they? <laughs> Mine didn't either, but I'm just giving that as an example. So, <laughs> Right? She did, yeah, she still doesn't clean up her room, but that's okay. She's, hey, she's 19. She can do it. Hey, that's her room. It's her mess. She can do whatever she wants to. All right. Um, but but you, you go a little bit easier, right? Um, now, kids will try you. That's a great place to practice because you got a lot of practice. You, everyone in this room has some practice. You have to work through that, right? But when you, you learn, you learn kind of how, what to do and what not to do, right? So, the, so that the, our fourth thing should be we should leave balanced lives. We should be balanced in our approach. First, the word is moderation, That one of the words to translate gentleness. And this moderation word doesn't mean exactly what we think it means. Moderation has to do with justice in this context. The person who is showing moderation is one who does not always insist on justice, but is willing to extend mercy and grace to those around so that you have moderation, right, to do it with mercy and with grace, right? Jesus could have had justice on the woman who committed adultery, but she did, he did not, right? He was soft. He showed mercy and grace, but he told her to go and sin no more, right? He could have been harsh. And said, no, this is how it's going to happen. But he didn't. We should do that the same way. Second, the idea of moderation has to do with the balance in our lives. We're to be champions of truth and extenders of mercy. Champions of truth and extenders of of mercy. That's how we should live. We're to uphold God's standards while reaching out to those who have turned their back on God. All the people who turn their back on God, we're to show mercy and grace whether they believe or not. I'm not saying you got to run out and find people. you got to grab them and hug them and love them and tell them what Jesus has done for you. But if you can just live and be kind and nice and smile, they may absolutely turn in a way that you least expect it. So in conclusion, it's important that we see two other things from the text. First, the parameters of the instruction. All this instruction that comes to us, what is it? That we're to act this way to all people. It's easy to be nice and kind and and peaceful and gentle to those that we know and love, but it's hard to be easy to others who are disagreeable, who are not like us. But Paul doesn't leave a loophole in the text. He says for all people. Paul wants us to be this way to everyone, and especially with the difficult people. We're to be this way with the false teacher, the person of another faith, the person who has abrasive personality. It disarms people. When people realize, huh, You're nice. What is it that's going on? Second, notice the motivation for the instructions. Why? What is our motivation to do this? We realize that the Lord is near. The end of verse 5 says that. The Lord is near. He is right with us. So if we can think about that and realize that he's with us, maybe we would act a little different. It could mean two things. It could mean that the time is short or it could mean the time is now but that Christ is present with us. He's always near to us. So we need to respect others, those around us, first. We need to be patient with difficult people and circumstances. We need to relate to others with kindness and softness and lead balanced lives. So those are five practical ways through these weeks of how we are to to be and live like Jesus not next week is Pentecost, but the week after, we're gonna, I'm going to do a series that will get us all the way through June that's going to be on act like, how we're going to act this way now. Really ways, and these are practical ways. 
They're very practical ways. They're very hard to do. But that's why we have our groups, our times to study and learn and be with each other, to mentor one another, to lift each other up. So I hope that you will take these practical ways and, and, and use them. I, I know in the first service as I was talking to folks, I mean, I had some folks who were like, man, this really spoke to my heart. I needed to hear some of these practical ways. Our youth over there, there's a, some youth that meet on a Monday night off campus, have a Bible study together. They want to do this themselves. Um, so here's how the youth are, are keeping up with what I'm saying. They make a little bingo card of what I'm going to say what little phrases I'm going to use, and they check it off. Well, they have to listen of what I'm going to say, right? And I was pretty neat, right? So they, they all sit on the front row over there, and they're all listening and paying attention to what I'm saying. So, you know, whatever it takes to get attention to hear and to, to be able to apply this, you use whatever it is. So there's a lot of transformation that is happening in this church. I hope this is happening in your life. You know, if you need to talk more about that, please come see me. I would rather you talk to me about those things and just to listen. I'll listen to you. I'd love to listen how God is doing something in your life that you don't know how in the world this is happening. But, man, it has opened you up for something that's really great in this world. Let's pray. Oh, God, we are thankful for this opportunity to gather together as the church. We thank you that we can learn more about how to be more like you. As you are present with us in our lives, continue to just strengthen us and and, and, and show us wisdom and patience and gentleness and kindness. Show us self-control. Give us and have us work on those fruits of the Spirit that we ourselves might live this way not just talk or or sing about these things. That we can, can show that love and respect to one another and that we can understand what's really going on when we don't really know or are sure. Maybe by our conversations with each other, we can come to understand how our lives are actually intersecting. Lord, for those who are hungry and homeless and hopeless, we certainly pray for them. We know that you're touching them in their lives in ways that we can't right now. But if we come across folks, if they're in our path, show us, teach us how to use our hands and feet to help, to be a listening ear, to share a smile. I pray for each person and the families in this room that whatever's going on in their life, Lord, you're continuing to be with them and strengthen them For for women all across the world, the motherly figures in our lives, women who who, who have nurtured and born humankind, for all that they do and will do and have done, we give you great thanks, God, for it takes us all to have patience and kindness to raise children, to be with children, to be with people, to, 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 to wrestle with all the things that come with just being human. And Lord, we are thankful for our church, that you have given us a, a campus that we ourselves can be stewards of, that we can open our doors, and that we can, we can show hospitality and welcome at every turn. Now, as we Prepare to leave this place in a a, a bit. We pray that you will go with us as families gather together on this day, as those may sit alone on this day, whoever and wherever. Oh God, give your loving spirit to them and tell them that you love them. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's now our opportunity to profess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. So I'll have a stand at this time. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. I know God has blessed me as I know that he has blessed you. So now is our time to give back to God what is his by the presentation of our tithes and offerings. Oh God, these gifts we give back to you for they were yours before they were ours. Multiply them in our presence like the loaves and the fishes so that your kingdom may be built on earth and in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our closing hymn is To God Be the Glory, hymn 98 are also on the screen.
those are two good hymns that we sang today, Blessed Assurance and To God Be the Glory, both written by Fanny Crosby, who was blind and wrote hundreds and hundreds of hymns, right? So she found a way to be kind and gentle and show God's love and God's glory and God's mercy. Even though she couldn't see with her eyes, she could see with her heart. Now take that and all the practicality that you've learned and go into the world to proclaim Christ your Lord and Savior. Go in peace to love Christ this day and always. Amen.